In this video, I'll be discussing what I think is the irrelevant Monorman grip debate. Now, this video or this image that you see right here is Mo Norman showing Craig Shankland in the vi in the video that Craig did for Mo in 1994 for the PGA teaching, coaching and teaching summit where where Mo was crowned the greatest ball striker by the PGA. And uh, so this was 1994, and Mo changed his grip in December of 1992, and I will show you when that was. So this is a picture from a book written by Ralph Mann, and I don't know Griffin's first name, but Ralph Mann is a biomechanist who was a runner, and he got into golf. So this is page 38, where the teaching pro, Griffin, is explaining to us that the 10-finger grip stifles freedom and prevents the hands from performing in a, performing in a unified fashion. Well, if that's true, the head of Mo Norman strike the ball just as well with his split finger, ten finger grip as he did with his overlapping Varden grip. We're also told in this book that although Jack Nicholas favored and Tom Kite did too the interlocking grip, it's the most difficult grip to employ correctly. Think that's true? I've tried all three, and what feels best to me is interlocking, me personally. But that's me. So here's a problem with a lot of these books when pros tell you this is the way you do it, that's the way you do it. Really, where's the scientific evidence for this? You can see your scientific method. Where is the scientific evidence that any of this is actually true? And I will tell you there is none because there's been no scientific studies on grips like this. So no one really knows. It has to be preference. So when you search Mo Norman's grip in Google, you get this is the first page and then this was the second page. And so you see... The guy who shows up the most is going to be Graves, Graves, more Graves, 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 Graves. So he promotes the uh, the the single plane swing, of, and he talks about. You can see here again this Mo Norman golf. This is Todd Todd Graves also Mo Norman's grip and grip size. Okay, so this is the cover of uh, Tim O'Connor's book showing Mo Norman holding doing his overlapping Varden grip where his hands were not so much in the palm. And in 1992, uh, he changed and he explained uh, his his inter, his inter split-handed or, or, or ten-finger grip to Craig Shanklin in this video right here that was put up by Kirk. I don't know if, you, if this J is silent or sound like a J. So Kirk Jung or Young, I'm not sure what his name, how to pronounce it properly. But at 537 in part one of two, Mo talks about his grip and he's showing Craig his grip there. So basically, uh, Mo Norman swung for up until 1992 with the overlapping Varden. It was way less in his fingers uh, than, say, Mo Norman. I mean, than, uh, than Ben Hogan. Uh, but it was nothing like the palm grip that you see here. But it turned out that Mo struck the ball just as well with the split-handed and the Varden grip. So really, does it make a difference? Does not make any difference? This is, uh, now I don't know how to say his name either. Is it Koikendall, Kukendall, Kukendall? Jack, we'll just call it uh, Koikendall, Kukendall. Jack Kukendall, uh, he's the natural golf guy, and he, this is his YouTube channel, Jack and Mo from 1993 to 1990, because remember, it was 1992, it was December of 92, I'll show you in a second, where this guy, Koikendall, explained to Mo, and you can see Mo here, this is 1992, look at Mo's body habitus, right? His He was not looking obese in 1992, December yet. He became, I don't know what he did between December of 92 and 1995, he just became enormous. He's huge in the Golf Digest. He looks like he weighs about 50 pounds heavier in the Golf Digest uh, spread that they did on him in 1995. So this is Jack Koikendall's Kuken, Kukendall. Geez, I'm so sorry if I'm, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Sorry. But the reason I'm showing this is just because it's just an intro to an, the next video that I do. This is just kind of funny. So, so, so Natural Golf Koikendall, he hired Todd Graves at uh, at one point back in the, what, I think, 94, 
Dittini taught natural golf, and that's where and that's where Graves met Mo. So there's this little like you know, it appears to be some infighting. So this is Koikendall saying that Mo and Norman never had single plane mechanics, and he's kind of right. And I'll show you what I mean in a future video. But this is what he said. Look at this. Mo Norman did not swing on a single plane or one plane. Every person promoting him being on a single plane is a scam artist. I mean, these guys are too much. I will talk about this myself, but I do want to show you something. So this is from Craig Shankland. So, uh, and this was in 1994. Mo was a little more stout then, but still he could move pretty good. His backswing was still pretty short. And when he was young, by the way, he raised his heel up about this high off the ground. Ever see one of those? No, of course not, because all you see is Mo Norman's old man swing, close to heart attack swing. So when you see uh, his setup position, you line up the, you can see the arrow, I mean the red line on it, and then impact. So you can see he brings the club back to his impact position. Does that mean he swings on a single plane? No, it means that his setup position sets him so he brings the club back to a setup position. You can do it on one plane or a non-one plane. And I don't know if he did it on a one plane or not. Craig Shanklin told me it was pretty close. I think that was when he was old. One of the things I want you to see here, though, is look how much Mo dropped. And I showed in a previous video about Mo Norman's secret that his actual vertical drop was his body, not his arms. And I'll show you that in another video when I blow apart the idea that this that he had a single plane swing. He definitely didn't even have a remotely, I mean, not even remotely a single plane swing when he was young. I'll show you in a future video of that. So in this case, Koikendall is correct. But this is Scotty Scheffler. Would you say that he has a single plane swing? No. So here's his setup position and watch his impact position. There you go. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> so he clearly has doesn't have a single plane swing, but he sets up to the ball and he brings his hands back exactly the same way. Pretty close. This is Miller Barber. Look at hip through impact. Clearly, he went right through that same line. But where did he start his backswing from to get there? It was this. Clearly, no single plane. This is me. I kind of move right through that same line. Does that mean I have a single plane swing? No. It means that I set myself up at the proper distance for my rotational movement skill so that I can get, the, get my hands back to pretty much the setup position as best I can. So just because your setup and your, your setup position looks like your impact position does not mean you swing on you swing on a single plane. So this is an intro to the next video. So back to the uh, back to the grip. So this is back to Quakendall's first meeting with Mo, December of 1992. They 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 memorialized it with a the picture. There he is. You can see Mo is, you know, he was stout in the middle, but he wasn't enormous yet. So uh, this first meeting, so the front, in the same video, you can see, uh, Mo's next question surprised me. He asked, what can I do to get better? All right, so very, very innocent, humble, childlike, despite the fact that he's the greatest ball striker ever. What can I do to get better? <laughs> That's amazing. So he decided to change his grip. So he said a split-handed grip. So this is what, uh, what uh, Koykendall told Mo. A split-handed grip is superior to the Varden overlapping grip. So Mo tried it, allegedly, according to Koykendall. After about 10 strikes, Mo looked up and said, this is better. And then Mo played with a split-handed grip until his death in 2004, which is absolutely true. And this, of course, is showing in 1994 uh, of his, 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 uh, his split-finger grip, his split-handed grip. Okay, so this... Guy you've never heard of, uh, but Mo Norman certainly did. This was Mo Norman's best buddy in Florida from 19, well, from 1970 until he died in 2004. Gary Wentz is the head pro at New Smyrna Golf Club in New Smyrna Beach. He grew up in the Daytona area, and he started watching Mo hit balls when Gary was just seven years old. So that puts it at about 1958. And he, uh, his family eventually joined Tomoka Oaks, a uh, golf course in the Daytona area, which is where Mo, which is where a lot of the Canadians were hanging out then. So it was Gary. Gary met Mo as friends, fellow players on the range at Tomoka Oaks in 1970. So that puts Mo at about 40 years of age. And so Gary, so Gary 
played golf with Mo 1970 to 74 for six months out of the year when Mo was down from, from Canada. They would have breakfast at Tomoka Oaks. They would hit balls. And that was, by the way, when Gary's back pain started because he tried to hit, keep up with Mo, which you can't do. And I'll show you why in the, in the next video that, that I do, illustrating why it is that Mo's swing was not a single plane swing when he was young, for sure. It might have been a little bit when he was older, pretty close when he was older, but not when he was young by a long shot. So, but Gary tried to keep up with them and end up with getting with uh, with with back pain. So Gary played golf. So so they would so they would eat breakfast, hit balls, eat lunch, and go out and play. That was their routine. And then Gary uh, took Mo around and and had Mo play with him uh, at the various Florida mini tour events. So this guy played go played golf with Mo a ton, prob well several hundred rounds. I mean they played every day when you know when both were were in town. And when Gary was on tour, either in America or in Europe, he would, <laughs> his father in Daytona would go over to the, to the bowling alley where Mo would hang out at night. And, and, and Gary would call the bowling alley from wherever he was or around the country, around the world. So Gary told me, he, Gary told me that he remembered distinctly, specifically when it was that Mo told him about changing his grip. So, and Gary said it was 19, it was, it was, uh, it was a 2000, no, sorry, 1992, just like Kyoi Kendall said. So they meet in December. It was either that afternoon or the next day or pretty close to it where Mo went over to Gary's, uh, where Gary was working in Daytona as a head pro or something, uh, and I forget where it was. And Mo told Gary about the grip change and the reason why swinging from uh, with the split finger or the split hand is the best way to swing. He started swinging, and Gary told me, and remember, Gary watched Mo hit balls from 1957 until Mo stopped coming to Florida at the end of the 90s, maybe early 2000s, because he had a heart attack and had heart surgery in the late, in the late 90s. And Gary told me that he never saw any difference in Mo's ball striking skills, whether it was overlapping Varden or split handed. So the whole thing about the grip is ridiculous. So Mo was the greatest ball striker, no matter if he overlapped or split handed the grip in his palms. It doesn't make any difference at all. So the reason why is because Mo was, had such great body movements and had such great coordination. For me, I can't swing like this, and a lot of people can't. Uh, most people do overlapping or, or interlocking. I'm an interlocker. So I do have a chapter in my book about grip size and gripping the club, but it's not about like playing. It's more about relaxing. Geez, don't listen to some of these crazy people say you can only do it this way or that way. You have to you have to grip like Hogan or not like Hogan. So, and I and I pulled out my old copy of uh, what's his name's book, um, Harvey Pennick. and or actually I listened to a video and it was because Tom Kite and 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 uh, Ben Crenshaw, Harvey Pinnock was was their guy. And there was about an hour video I watched and Harvey Pinnock said, yeah, you can overlap, interlock, split finger. I mean, split hand doesn't make any difference. Palm, finger doesn't make any difference. Thick, thin doesn't make any difference. It boils down to what makes a difference for you, not for the teaching pro who's teaching you or the book that you're reading. So whatever works best for you. On this driver, I've got the medium jumbo max, uh, so they're very thick. On my regular irons, I've got one set of iron with the thick jumbo max and other ones with just built up uh, jumbo grips because I like, I like big grips. That just works for, for me. So from if this is the first time you've happened to watch a video by me, here is, here is my approach as an amateur trying to suck less. Our setup distance from the ball should be based upon our movement skills so that at impact, or getting close to impact right here, you can see that I have maintained my spine angle. I have not, gone in, I have not moved into early extension, and you can see I have not stood up or moved forward. Right? So your setup distance from the ball should be based upon you maintaining these confines or closest, hopefully better than this, but you know this isn't horrible. And then learning to swing from the heels. What I mean by that is staying off of the toes. So for me, uh, I don't care, you know, grip, take it outside, inside, whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference to me. 
you want to make sure that your setup distance is proper for your movement skills and you're staying off your toes. Everything else is pretty free for all. And if you watch these guys swing, look at Jordan Spieth. Look at, because uh, right now as I'm doing this, the uh, the playoff is going on for, for the 2023 Heritage. Look how different Spieth swing is from Scheffler, from Cant uh, Cantlay, and from Matthew Fitzpatrick. Totally different swing styles, but they all follow these rules. They can stand closer to the ball and follow these rules. They all follow these rules, these two rules. They follow these two rules, period. They can all follow these rules by standing close. I can only follow these rules in a very in a, in a much less dynamic fashion if I'm down here. I'm really more like I'm a CD guy. So you gotta figure out what your distance is. And all the rest of this is about how to get rid of error factors. So it's not about, you know, this is how to play golf. Hardly the case. This is how to suck less to get rid of error factors in the swing. And the two most important error factors that amateurs have is we stand too close to the ball and we swing from our toes. Those are the enemy and no tip will help you swing better if you have those two problems. So check out the book if you have an interest. You can just go right to Amazon, type in the name and check it out. You can do the look inside thing and check it out.